To reach me that she due to have surgery sometime today or tomorrow. Right. Thank you. Already has taken place. So I, I have to have a word of prayer right now. Amen. Mother Amen. Father God, have mercy right now in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, only you know the nature of this call, oh God. But see, see, Pastor Pope would drop a call, Lord. But you are always on the main line, Lord God. We right now in the name of Jesus. Comfort her soul in the name of Jesus, oh God. Not to know, Lord God, when you on the assignment, Lord God, you are the healer that you are, Lord God. Do what, Lord God, that none of us can do, oh God, because you are right on time, oh God. We don't need right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, have mercy. Amen. 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 Father God, have your way right now, Lord God. Whatever you have this vessel to do, oh God, I shall obey, Lord God. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. 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 You all may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. It's indeed an honor to be in the house of the Lord. Zo, the life, church. Amen. 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 Praise God. First lady, good to see you. First lady Whitaker. Pastor Jeffrey Whitaker, I thank God for you, man of God. We kept passing each other in the hallway, sharing a little word, and encouraging each other along the way. And now we are in a, a spiritual fellowship. Amen. I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. And to each and every one of you, I thank God for you. And to this dynamic, shallow missionary Baptist church, it's a portion of us here represented. I thank God for this dynamic choir of musicians. Amen. Yes. Thank God for them. Amen. Awesome to the ushers. I thank God for you, my deacons. Amen. Deacon Washington, raise your hand. The chairman and the vice chairman, Deacon K, raise your hand. Praise the Lord God. Amen. Deacon Ness is also in the midst. And to my minister there, amen, I, I couldn't come any further there in the foyer. I said, I got to wait for my minister to come on over, amen. I just thank God for her, amen. Uh, when mama can't make it, amen, I, I tell you, she's right there, amen. So I am truly blessed. But I, I, I'm going to be honest, I didn't come to church to just, just slow the brakes down. <laughs> right. I, it, it's, it's hard to slow the brakes down, but... I received two messages. You, you know what I'm talking about. I got two messages. And I said, Lord, uh, you just take me where I'm supposed to go, Lord God. And I heard that prayer that went up out, out here. Amen. I said, oh, I, I know where I'm supposed to go. I, I got to stay on the foundation. Amen. Amen. And that's where I'm going to take you to the foundation of Matthew chapter 7. If you would turn to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, I'm just going to read for your hearing, verse 24 through 29, and then I'm going to rest, amen, in those verses, amen, that, um, yeah, I'm just going to walk with it, how about that, amen, thank you, Lord God, amen, for my young people, I always make sure that not only do I read the King James Version of the Bible, for those of you, I know that's your preference, amen, but I always say that as an educator, my students have to be able to understand the English the correct way, amen. We don't say E, D, thou, right? Uh, Ms. Whitaker, unless we're going to put a big old F on their paper, amen. But we want them to use correct English. So I'm going to also read it from the New Living Translation of the Bible, and I'll just walk it from there, amen. I'm going to read it from the King James first, if you, amen. Stand to your feet and honor God's holy word from Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 24, reading of the King James Version of the Bible, followed by the New Living Translation of the Bible. I uh, see I have my elementary babies in the house. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Therefore, we find Jesus is still teaching, amen, throughout this chapter 7. And he stated to them, Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do it them. I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not. 
for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these words, these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And the New Living Translation reads accordingly. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise. Amen. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. Final verse 29, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. You all may have a seat. To Zoe the Life Church and celebrating your church 15th anniversary, greetings and much love to you from God the Father, amen, who is the head, I'm sure, of this house, amen. amen. Praise God, amen, for that confirmation. And for this great thing that you all have here, for this occasion is strong tower, strong foundation. Amen. Strong tower, strong foundation. I am one that loves studying various topics. But let me be very clear, I'm also one of truth. And I believe in speaking my truth. I do not have a master's degree, amen. I do hold two bachelor's degrees, amen. And I just want to make sure I get that correction. I don't want y'all to go and say, Pastor Bo, get this and break. No, 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 no. Amen. I understand, dear. Amen. God bless you. But I, I don't have a master's. But what I like to do and what I enjoy doing is study. And, and you never grow too old to the point to that you can't learn something new. Amen. amen. I am constantly learning and, and seeking after, amen, uh, uh, a, a greater awareness and enlightenment on various topics uh, that I am exposed to or that I just go seeking after. And one thing that I am reminded of is when you take under consideration the, uh, a structure. If we consider a one-story house, a one-level house, and I'm not talking about split level, not one with a basement when I go see my family up in Georgia. And I'm talking about down here in Florida. I'm comfortable. I live right here in the old goose. I'm a goose native, amen. Did anything, can anything good come out of goose? I'm a little with you sometimes, amen. Amen. Praise God. And so I'm in a one story house, and, and every step of the way, I took pictures of the entire process. I am one that has a, a great understanding of architect. I know how to draw plans. I know how to, to work with the engineer and, and design and design my house, remodeling my parents' house after it was literally devastated by Hurricane Andrew. And I know you all will not forget that day, August 24th, 1992. Lord, have mercy, Amen. Jesus. But one thing about a one story one level home in comparison to a tower or to one of those magnificent high rises in downtown Miami is that you have to take on the consideration that as high as the structure go, deeper is the foundation of that structure. Amen. Amen. The depth is what's going to determine what is about to be built upon that foundation that is to come. That's it. That's it. And one thing that I realized in the, in the process when it comes to celebrating 15 years, I'm just going to give you your title. It is the sure foundation that you all are standing upon. Amen. And this sure foundation is one that reassures us that when you 
have an anchor in a bedrock that is unmovable, Amen. unshakable, always abounding. Yes. I want you to know that no matter how you stand on that foundation, you should not find yourself slanting at a 30 degree angle or a 45 degree angle. You should always Always find yourself with the ability to stand 90 degrees upright on that structure without um, wondering if it's compromised in any way. But one thing about the one level home in comparison to that high rise, as I stated, the foundation is very different. But they both inquire literally the same thing. I can have an architect to design the structure, but an engineer tells me if it's possible to be done according to the building code, amen? Yeah. And, and because you know you got to have the inspectors that has to validate that permit to say, okay, engineer, it is more than capable. You definitely have what, will take, what it will take in order to build the structure. And then another aspect of it, both of them do have in common, is that it's going to require workers. Yes. It's going to require everybody joining it and, and working together and laying that foundation. Yes. And you cannot build thoroughly any structure until you have a foundation first. Yes. So we're getting ready to stand on the surefire foundation, amen? I'm just giving you a little warm up here because I feel the spirit of God already flowing, but I got to try and take my time and, and, and just slow it down just a little bit, amen. amen? But we have a sure foundation. This sure foundation is the rock. It is Jesus himself who is teaching this particular parable to the people. What he's pointing out is building on a solid foundation and looking at two types of builders. He says in the New Living Translation, anyone who listens to my teaching, first thing you got to be is a listener. Amen. This foundation that we stand on, this sure foundation is actually the word of God itself. If you want to know the will of God, you learn his word. If you want to be effective in doing his will, you got to know his word. Because there's no way you can speak life over yourself or over anyone else and you don't want to even abide by this word. So he said, it is for anyone. The last I checked when I walked over to John the third chapter in the 16th verse, I that that anyone is that whosoever. Yes. I don't know if that was you one day, but that was me when the veil had to come down. Yes. That for whosoever believing in his son Jesus, amen, shall have whatever last and life. Because when you go back to the eight cause of that, it says, Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. Oh, that's your foundation. His only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So, so I thank God to know that I was the whosoever, and you all are the whosoever, amen. Yes. That anyone who what, listens to my teachings. Uh -huh. yes. Oh, I thank you, Lord God. Yes. There's nobody like you. I have not found, and it's, it's like baffled all my religious teachers, or even my philosophy professors along the way. I have not found no one like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. The last I checked, everybody else who stood at some point on their foundation and with their philosophies and their doctrines and their principles, I found that Jesus rose on the third day. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. That's a sure foundation, amen. Yes. He rose on the third day with all power and he lived, it. amen. Yes. So there's no foundation like inking yourself in this sure foundation. So he's teaching here. He said, so, so if you just follow my teaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because he showed us in these 33 years of him being on earth how to walk this walk. But understand something, you will never reach perfection on this side. Yeah. I'm sorry, you just won't reach perfection. So, so get that clouded view out of your mind. And I know there are some days, uh, better yet some hours that you make and you have not seen yet. But I'm reminded of Proverbs, the 24th chapter, verse 16, that a just man falleth seven times and can what? Rise up again. The problem is, he didn't tell me those seven times would be if I fall seven times in one hour, but seven times within 13 hours, seven times within 24 hours. But I do know this. As long as I have his teaching, that sure foundation as my anchor, I'm coming back up. Yeah. That's why you got to say that no matter what, when you see that the engineer and, and the surveyors and all, everyone is inspecting the property before that structure is built. They're out there and they're scanning out, they're 
they're, they're scanning this and, and see things have changed. So they have lasers now that can determine the, the depth of the property yeah. and, and, and then how wide it, the property is going to be and the, the length of the property. So that is so precise now. But what I want you to know, our God is keener and wiser and swifter yeah. than that. Amen. Yeah. And so, so that's why he said, so if you follow the teachings, You'll be like it unto the wise person. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I, I have to, amen, make sure that I'm wise in this word, he said. Because in this word, you will gain what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And all that getting, get what? Understanding. Because it'll do you no good to say you're wise, but you don't know how to apply it. So that's why he said you got to what? Follow it. Yes, yes. All right, all right. See, see we want to run through a foundation, but, but it's a whole different story when you begin to obey. And this is where we get the distinction between these two individuals that we're about to find here. He said, so this wise is like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Yes. Oh God, I thank you for solid rock. Yes. Because us living here in South Florida, amen, uh, when a hurricane comes through, you need to make sure that you have a solid rock with some masonry blocks, amen, that are all some strap band down, roof, rafters, and everything else on um, those trusses got to be in place. So nothing to blow up. Because I need to make sure I'm on solid, a solid foundation. He said, so will you build because of following his teaching, doing his will? And see, many of us want to build a structure. Uh, and you know, uh, one thing about this teaching when it comes to building, uh, this foundation was addressing when you can go to the lexicon and just a hermeneutics of the matter is that it was a matter of a person wanting to concern themselves with the foundation of their life. All right. What is the right way to that my life will be right with the Lord? Right. And if I get this word, this word is my foundation, and this word is, it, it, is the will that's in stage, and, and I'm following his will as Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 even tells me, and, and I'm doing what his word says, and, and I have it intact. He said, guess what? Not only are you wise, but you're on a, a, a solid footing with, with this word, amen? Yeah. To be able to, to do what this word calls for you to do. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Yes. Amen. Father God, I thank you. Yes. Because we have to be wise and we have to be obedient to your word, oh God. And because this word reassures us that it is a stable foundation. All right, all right. And when we follow this word in according to his will, Father God, we're able to, to be reassured that no matter what comes and, and no matter what happens, I'm anchored in a solid foundation. All right, all right. And it's a sure foundation. And, and, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm kind of resting right there because I found no one like you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and once I got your word, oh God, yes. and once I understand how to do your will, oh God, yes, yes. I know that no matter what I'm faced with, oh God, yes. that I can go running back to you, Lord God. Yes. I can go on bending knees yes. to you, Lord God. Yes. And I know this sure foundation, as the choir said, reassures me that he's a way maker there. Yes. And he's a miracle worker there. Yes. He's my promise keeper there. Yes. But I just got to be willing to take this word that is now written upon my heart and just take it back to him. Yeah. And one thing about it, you got to be willing to, to give him back his word. Yeah. Yeah. If you give him back his word, his word will not return to him void, but it will fulfill yeah. the purpose where it has been yeah. sent to. Yeah. 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 So I get to speak this word. But let me tell you about this 25th verse. It says, though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on a bedrock. All right. And see, one thing about it, once you have the word, you can stand solid. Yes, yes, yes. You can stand solid on, on a sheer footing. And as I, I love to hear my choir sing, to declare war about a situation. Right. And so you got to have this word, which is the sword itself from, God, from Ephesians chapter 6. Yes, yes. And when you have this word and you swing that sword, what you're saying, I'm declaring over everything that is around me, everything in my house. Yes. Yes. And, and see, that's why you got to go through your house. You got to go about your grounds and the property yes. and declare life over it. Yes. Declare protection. Yes. 
protection over it. They bear the provisions of God upon it. The guidance of God upon everybody who comes on that property. Because every now and then the rains are going to come. But he says, this foundation is one concerning your life. Yes. And then it's one concerning the foundation that could be of your family. Amen. And see, this is why you got to declare war, because when you establish a house and you have a family in there and you make it a home, I hear you, Luther. And, and, and it's just not a structure anymore, but it's where family resided. We need to make sure that our houses have that solid foundation, which yes. is the word of God. Yes.
church. I don't know how you're going to find a man. You don't go anywhere but the church. But I'd rather know that I got a man of God. Hallelujah. Who obeys this word. Who understands that to the sure foundation. Yeah. Now, brother, if you build on that foundation, I'm sure I'm going to walk up. <laughs> Love the town. Hallelujah, Lord God. And I want the penthouse, too. Praise yeah. God. So, so, when we get a good understanding of this matter, when we take on the consideration the wise and the fool, the appearance look good because both of those structures may be painted nicely. Yeah. All right, they may have the United States of America flag out there. Yeah. They got the mailbox yeah. and they got the number. Everything look good. Uh, oh, I guess I know some of these homes. You, you want your front porch because it's mine. You have your little southern days, amen. Uh, uh, okay, you need a little rock or you just might need a swing or, or some other, other nature. But but I, I, you just have to have a swimming pool. I got a pond, amen. I, I put it in my backyard, amen. Uh, but the rock wild, she just jumped all over into it. I tell you. But but you know the comfort to feel cool. Yes. And see, that was the problem when it came to Jesse. Mm -hmm. The appearance looked good out of all those sons. Yeah. Samuel, your prophet yeah. Samuel, was looking at Jesse's sons. Yeah. And see, you don't get into the habit of trying to judge the book without reading the contents of it. That's why, and let me checkmate you right, right quick here. See, the problem is you can't understand the foundation of the one that's sitting there and sitting there because they're all the temple of God. Amen. His spirit abides within his children. So when we come together collectively, we are a, 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 the body of Christ. Amen. And see, you can make a big mistake when you think, oh, they, they just up here, they just doing that. They ain't really paying attention. Oh, look, they on their cell phone. Oh, uh, yeah. They're not doing anything. But see, you won't understand my praise. You won't understand my nature. The reason for me being here until you have walked in my shoes over the course of this day or over my lifetime. You just won't understand. So you get into the habit of looking at the appearance of the packaging and you're going to get lost. So God said, let me tell you something about this. Once you get my word on the inside, understand you're going to be tested. And how literally test each of these foundations, I'm going to send a storm. Right. And see, that's the problem. A lot of times you don't think it's God doing this. Yes. But oh, wait a minute, did not Job, did Job ask for what he received? All right. uh, 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 oh, oh, wait, let's turn up the volume. Was not, is God, God who gave permission for Satan to literally to enter into the kingdom, to, yeah. to hold a conversation yeah. Yeah. with him? by hearing and by hearing the word of God. But what he also has to do is test you. Let's see, do you really have this word on the inside? Because see, if you had asked Job why after all that he had been through, she would have said, curse your God and would just die for a man. I don't think you're going to come through this. Uh, you know what? I, I got an obituary prayer for you, bro. You know what happened to those ten children. Everything is gone. I, I, I just don't see you having a turnaround. And then in your life. I'm here to tell you, Lord, have mercy. Yes. Some of these things you got to leave alone. Yes. Your social media presence, you got to leave alone. All these people you confining in, you yes. telling them this, you yes. trying to relate to them on this level. I know you want to be sympathetic and empathetic, but if the Spirit of God don't tell you to share your business or to say, guess what, my old man acting the same way. Guess what, man, my wife acting the same way. Wait a minute, my children acting the same way. Spirits that's going to take over your house. You need to be pleading the blood of Jesus. That is 
Christian real with you. I see you. I understand your being, but I got to step up higher. Yes. I, I'm called to higher things. Baby, I am an eagle. I am an eagle. I, I didn't come around and walk with some goats every now and then. If I choose to come down to a lower elevation, yes. guess what? I assure you, I'm going back up high. Yes. So I can just soar. Yes. And that's what God will do for you. When you get this word on the inside, you're not concerned about somebody's appearance and interpretation of how they think your appearance should be. But Lord, lo and behold, yes. Lord, I got it because I know you gave it to me. Yes. And see, that's what you got to stand on a sheer footing. But a fool is just the opposite. A fool want to run based on appearance. Yes. But God said, Joe, I know you've been through something. Yes. And I know you're going through something. Yes. And you have put the word on the inside of you. Yes. See, God, Joe continued to depend on God. well with your friends. Yes. They come false accusing you and everything. See all your social media friends, when you say you have a need for something, they're not trying to put no uh, yeah. it'll be one thing, all your friends sent you a dollar for your situation. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he got to deal with these hard-headed men. Yeah. yeah, it's something you did. But see, when you are upright, when you are a just woman, when you are a just man, God said, I need to make sure that on the inside of you that this word has now not only been solidified there, right. and that it's anchored there, but now I got to put it to the test.